Hello brothers and sisters, I hope you're well. Fair play to Simon who records a lot of messages. It's very time consuming and I'm sure the more you do it, the better you become. But you could easily sit in front of a tablet or a phone and do 13 or 14 takes of the same thing. So I think the best advice for anybody who's trying to contribute to any service by using this technology is to maybe, as Anne Frank did with her diary, treat the tablet or the phone as a friend rather than uh, an inanimate object. So I'm speaking to you through my friend, my iPad here. And what I want to share with you today are two, I suppose, picked up from two words that I heard in Micheál Martin's speech on Monday evening. Now, I'm sure many of you watched this speech. There was an impending certainty for all of us that there was going to be a level five restriction broadcast and confirmed. What I found about this speech that was quite encouraging actually was the fact that Christmas was heavily emphasized. Now, of course, in a general diplomatic sense, it was more towards Christmas being important for family and for individual ritual. As Christians, we do know the significance of Christmas. So Michal Martin was correct in saying how important it is to people. He also talked about entering into darker days, into darker evenings and shorter days. Now, this was not just about the physical change of season. He is and he was using a comparative, speaking about how going into this type of situation of a lockdown is dark for people in many senses of the word, socially, emotionally, spiritually. It can be very difficult. And as a church, we have a, a big role to play in softening that for people and being a, a voice into that. But there were two words that Michal Martin used that I want to share with you that I found very encouraging. And that one was light and the other was hope. Now, biblically, our understanding of light is not just physical light, but it's the light of Jesus. Jesus refers to himself in John chapter 8 as the light of the world. And all who come to him and follow him will no longer walk in darkness. Now, he's not referring to winter or summer months. He's referring to spiritual darkness, spiritual light. He's referring to the impact of sin on a person's life and how coming to him, seeking forgiveness and receiving that forgiveness eliminates and removes that darkness. Now, it doesn't mean that we as Christians don't have dark times or struggle. Of course we do. But the reality is that Christ's light and what he's done for us on the cross does overcome that. Now, it could take some people a lifetime to do so, but the truth remains the same that Christ is the light of the world and those who walk with him do so in the light and no longer walk in darkness. Now, Michal Martin, of course, was not referring explicitly to the light of Christ, but the reality is that when you read the scriptures, there is no other light source in the world. There's no other redemption and there's no other way of being saved and brought back into correct relationship with God other than Christ. And if you refer to light in any other capacity, then it may only be physical, and it may only be philosophical. Jesus offers far more than empty philosophy or daylight. He offers forgiveness and eternal life. And there's another element of scripture that focuses on the other word that Michal Martin used, hope. Now in chapter five of Romans, hope is the emphasis within that chapter. And it's an incredible chapter, of course, Romans being an incredible book for its laying out of the realities of scripture and of what God has done for us. But if you read in chapter 5, it talks about how we hope in the glory of God. And we do so in joyful adoration. We do so in good times. But it says not only that, but also take joy in your sufferings. It says also in suffering that we can find hope. And this sounds quite unusual, but actually for many of you, I'm sure you've experienced it. And I want to encourage you that the light of the world is with us and he always has been and that our hope is not going to put us to shame as it says in Romans but it's actually been shed shed abroad as it says or shed throughout our hearts by the Holy Spirit that has been given to us because of what Jesus has done now watching the speech of the night perhaps you wouldn't come away initially thinking that but the reality is that no matter what restrictions we face what difficulties that do present themselves to us, whether corporately or personally, individually. It doesn't matter as much as knowing that Christ, being the light of the world, 
has shed his blood so that his hope can be shed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, securing for us forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And actually, that's the greatest thing that any one of us can have. Doesn't belittle the restrictions, but maybe it puts them against that in a type of correct comparison and gives us a better perspective to handle the things that we are. Now, I would encourage everyone to look out for one another. And also, I would encourage one of you, each and every one of you to know that actually this time of great darkness that we may be facing is not only the time where light is most needed, but is also the time when light is most accepted. So we can be a real voice into this world and especially into the town and surroundings that we find ourselves in. So God bless you. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.